Uh, it's got UK here again, as you can see this time I'm looking at a PlayStation 1. Um, it's just described as faulty, so I've plugged this in, as you can see it's powered up. Uh, Put it on the screen. So it is actually coming up. Um, it's not doing anything, it doesn't sound like it's doing anything. So if we just get a disc in here, uh, and I just push the switch down there, so I move you further into shot, you can see it has a go there, it's trying to read the disc, it spins couple of times uh, my guess is the laser is probably bobbing up and down trying to focus on the disc and it can't see the disc so it's gonna be the laser I think uh, I've got some uh, replacement laser mechs for this I think it's the whole assembly here that you can replace I don't know if they're gonna work or not we'll give it a try um, the first thing I'll do before I do that before I swap it out though is just clean the uh, lens up there with a bit of IPA so I've got some IPA on a cotton bud there and we'll just give it uh, a quick going over like this. You don't put too much pressure on that. It's probably not going to make any difference. It, it did look a bit opaque. In fact, it still looks a little bit opaque now, actually. Uh, we'll see if that makes any difference at all. Probably not. Yeah, I think it's the laser. Could be the power supply. But it's more common for lasers on these to be the problem. So we'll get the lid off this now. You can see the six black screws here around the uh, underside. So the top should then just lift off like that. Uh, caps look good. But you can see down here around the power supply. Looks alright. Um, yeah, I don't think anyone's been in this because it's got all the right screws and things. And uh, I don't see any signs of a mod chip or anything like that. Sometimes you'll have a mod chip floating around around this area. sort of. Uh, but yeah, it looks okay. SMD caps on these, so ultimately they might need to swap it out. But yeah, I think we'll just assume for the moment it's, it's going to be the laser mech here. So uh, we'll just carefully uh, remove this, just disconnect that there. Unplug that. Uh, I think that's it. Yeah, the whole thing just comes off in one piece like that. So hopefully I've got some of the, the right type, I think. Uh, you can see you've got some hair around there as well. That's the sort of thing you can... Uh, clean off you know is it hair yeah just a bit of hair and some thick grease but uh, i think the plastic on the the, the sled wears here as well I forget where it's underneath the part where the, you know the the uh, head assembly slides up and down that that can wear but uh yeah you can see the uh, voltage adjustment there for the, the laser could try tweaking that but to be honest it's probably a good a good idea just to try and swap the thing out i think so I've got a pile of these because I had, uh, when I ordered one for my original uh, PS1, you can see I've got four, four piled up there and then the one obviously I've just took out of this box here. Um, I tested these and I think uh, they all seem to work. Um, where's the thing? Oh, it's tucked under there. Yeah, so assuming that's the same fit and it looks like it probably is, uh, hopefully it should just, uh, should just work. So what, one thing I've just found that's quite annoying actually is the ribbon is not as long. The ribbon on this one, the original one, is really long. Uh, it's the same mechanism exactly. Um, and it's got the same type of ribbon. But these are really short, so uh, there must be different revisions of this. You know, if you put this where the mounts are there, like that, you'll see it's just not long enough. There's no way it's long enough to reach uh, this connector here. So I don't know whether this, whether I can get an adapter for that to extend it or something, or whether I need to get a completely different laser uh, mech there, but um, yeah, that's a pain in the arse. But what I can do is I can connect it up, uh, it goes that way around like that, I think, um, and then just isolate it and just sit the laser mech there like that, I think, and then I should be able to use a cotton bud here to push the thing, so if we switch it on, uh, and I push the mechanism, you can see that it's spinning. So my extensions arrived, uh, they were pretty cheap actually, uh, they were to about, I don't know, 20 pence each or 50 pence each or something, I ordered a bunch of these. Um, so as you can see it's just a straight in line, you know, you've got your, your ribbon uh, edge there and on this side here somebody soldered on uh, a connector and then just put some masking tape around it to isolate it I guess. Um, and that should be sufficient, so if we connect this uh, up now, uh, I've got to get this around the right way, if we look at the connector here, the metal pins uh, are downwards there, so uh, let's just think about this, if we just connect, connect it so that the metal side is joining the metal side, in theory 
this side here, yeah, should be metal. You know, it's the same side as it was there. Um, and then this just needs to go into there as usual. That's it. Um, and in terms of mounting, the best way to do it is make sure the head is totally the home position that way, I think, and then just lay it like that. Perhaps push this way just a little bit to give it a little bit of leeway, uh, just in case it's not all the way across. And then I reckon take that down there like that, and then fold fold that over, uh, like sort of like that. I think um, because then the you know as the head moves across here, the ribbon will just sort of flex up. In the middle, um, and it's just better than having it floating around inside like that. You don't want it out at an angle like that because as this moves across, it's going to put unusual uh, tensions and things on the ribbon at a funny angle. You know that would get twisted like that. There, you know, so it's probably better off trying to trying to get it like that so that it, you know it, it naturally curls up as it moves along. I'm trying to push the thing along with along. Obviously, it's the, the actual the, the, the optical pickup bit there that just moves across. Um, I think that should be all right. So not the most elegant hack, uh, you can see I just put a fold there, uh, a fold here and a fold there. So they're very light and then just put a bit of tape just to hold it down, it's not going to go anywhere. Um, so I just need to test it out now, perhaps put an audio CD and just test the full uh, range here. But yeah, you can, I don't know if you can see, it should, if you just look down there, that ribbon should just fold under as it goes across I think. So I'll just test with the disc, uh, power it on, I just need to just temporarily push the sensor in there. Yeah, that's looking good I think. Uh, just point it with the screen. Let's just see if this loads okay. So I'm just going to adjust the laser voltage here and try and get it as dialed in as near as possible. Uh, I've got the scope, it's on uh, AC coupling here, which uh, yeah, it needs to be I think. Um, two volts uh, peak to peak um, test pattern there. You can see we've pretty much filled the display. If I just uh, adjust that a little bit, if I can, I'm going to try and get it to fill the whole thing so that I know that that's two volts, you know, from top to bottom. Yeah, that's near as damn it. So you can see we're going right from the top, right to the bottom. These are the ways of adjusting it. The other thing I have to do is put my scope probe on times 10. Uh, and I'm guessing it's probably going to be to do with the impedance, uh, you know, the set, you know, there's going to be a difference in impedance on that setting. Uh, I'll show you why. If I switch it on, uh, um, and on times one setting, as soon as I touch the test pad here, it was interfering with the read. Uh, I'll just simply show you this. It's not the easiest thing to film this, actually. Uh, you can see which has just come off actually, damn thing. That's the test pad there on this model. Uh, I'll put the model number up in a minute just so you can see, but I think it's similar um, between versions. And if I point you the scope, sorry my arm's in the way, we've got the eye pattern up. So, uh, and bear in mind like I said, it's two volts from top to bottom. So what have we got there? many blocks. Well we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight blocks in total and we've got one, two, three, four, five, just a bit more than five out of the eight. So I'm just going to adjust the voltage on this laser now um, and the way you do it is just to adjust this pot here with a, a suitable jeweler's screwdriver. Uh, obviously you know turning it clockwise will increase or decrease the voltage and then the opposite way will obviously be the opposite. <clears throat> I forget which but uh, you'll, I'll tweak it one way, measure it on the scope and then tweak it the other way uh, if need be. Oh, one, two, three, four, five. Yes, yeah, so that's about what? 1.25 volts. Um, it needs to be somewhere between about 0.9 and about 1.35. So that's probably all right. I could perhaps just reduce that a touch, move it nearer to 900 uh, millivolts, I think. So I've adjusted the eye pattern there, and it's just, it's around four actually. When it settles down, and as you can see, it's uh, 
let's say four, four blocks, one, two, three, four, and just a bit at the top and bottom. Once that starts to read the audio track in a minute, you'll see it'll settle down. Hang on. Yeah, it's just a bit more than four, perhaps four, perhaps four and a half, I would say. So I've adjusted the laser voltage there, and you can see we're down to one, two, three, four, just above, a tiny, tiny bit above four blocks when it's uh, reading the CD audio track. And I'd recommend using a CD audio track. I found that whilst it's loading data, as you'll see, just watch now whilst it's loading, it jumps all over the place, uh, you know, look, and then it stabilizes, then it jumps. Uh, so it's worth, uh, like I said, loading, you know, getting an audio disc in there or something, or you know, uh, loading a game and then just having it playing an audio track within that game whilst you're actually making your adjustments. So I've adjusted the laser voltage just a tweak there. It's very difficult. It's probably just a touch above 900 millivolts that, because you've got 0.25 volts per division here, and we've got one, two, three, and three quarters roughly. I was going for two thirds. If you get two thirds there, if I had two thirds, that would be on. 900 millivolts. So I mean is that two-thirds if you look at that top block? Yeah, it's probably not far off. So it's probably very close to 900 millivolts uh, You know 0.9 volts, and that's what you want to aim for um, if you're going to use one of these with CDRs and things uh, you know uh, uh, You know burnt discs and things, you know if you've got a, a chip in there um, You want to aim a bit higher maybe a 1 volt or 1.1 volts something like that So just testing it here on a bit of uh, my favorite game here, Dial Trilogy you can see it's working fine. So uh, I'm pleased I did that voltage adjustment because it was too high. It was like between 1.2 and 1.3 volts, I think. Somewhere in that region, it was well, well over what it should be. Um, as Retro Game once said in his video, because you know, that was one of the videos that gave me a bit of confidence to have a go at this myself, actually. Um, he pointed out that 900 millivolts is what you're aiming for initially. But if you're using uh, burnt discs and things, you perhaps want to go a little bit higher, maybe to one volt, somewhere around that region. Um, it's, it's probably going to be very similar, I would think, on a PS1 to what it was on the CD32, whatever it was he was looking at. Um, but yeah, I've got to thank Retro Game Mods for doing that video. Um, I'll put a link in the description of this video um, to his video. I highly recommend you take a look at it if you're uh, doing anything with CD pickups and things on these consoles. Uh, it's well worth watching that video. Maybe if you just want to just understand how these systems work and the uh, calibration required on them to get them on the send. There's the final result, all cleaned up, uh, not too bad, I'll just show you the underside so you can see uh, the exact model number, uh, although I will put it up in the description somewhere, the video, uh, it's an SCPH5502. Anyway, hopefully you found that interesting, thanks for watching, I'll see you soon.